Uh, hey guys, this is Atul from Team K Today in Academy and in this video, I'm going to talk about what to expect in this uh, class on containers and Kubernetes. And when I say containers, I am going to use that interchangeably with Docker. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to keep it high level and that's why saying what you can expect. And I'm going to break down the, this whole training into three parts. First part, we'll talk about the background and keep it high level. Then second part I'm going to talk about is containers and which is Docker. And I'm going to talk about Docker, but the same concept can be used in other container runtime, which you'll see in a minute. And then third part, I'm going to put it in terms of Kubernetes, what you can keep uh, understand. Now I'm going to keep it very high level so that you can see what to expect in this um, 30, 000, uh, in this bird's view of the containers and Kubernetes. So we'll begin with this training with the evolution of development and deployment, things like DevOps, microservices, containers and Kubernetes, uh, containers and cloud that you see in the last bottom part. Then we'll also talk about the differences between the traditional deployment model, which used to be bare metal, then virtual machines, containers and Kubernetes, which is a container orchestration tool. We'll look at two different type of hypervisors for virtualization that changed or revolutionized the world in back in 2002, 2003, 2004, and so on. We'll also look at the difference between a virtual machine and containers, how they are different, and what are the different parts within a containers. We'll also look at the difference between virtual machine, and as I said earlier, I'm going to use an example of Docker as a container, and difference between monolithic and microservices because that microservice is the one which you use to run um, on your container. So containers are basically using or running microservices ma mainly. So how these microservices are linked with containers. We'll also look at the different container runtime options that are available in the market right now and what are the most common ones. Then we'll touch base in terms of the container orchestration. One of the common question I get is what is this container orchestration and different container orchestration tools like Kubernetes, OpenShift, Docker Swam, Apache Mesos, Rancher, and so on. We'll briefly touch base with Kubernetes and then OpenShift. Later, we have a separate section about Kubernetes. I'm going to talk about that as well. And then finally, we'll put, uh, I forgot about fourth part, we're going to put it and saying what is uh, the Kubernetes on cloud, which we call managed Kubernetes, things like EKS, AKS on Azure, or Google, Google Kubernetes engine and Oracle Kubernetes engine, OKE. Now I'm going to briefly touch base this, the whole idea about what is the DevOps cycle look like, how you do it manually. And then if you have to use the CICD tool like Jenkins or GitOps, or um, GitLab Actions or GitHub Actions or um, AWS and Azure, how do you do that in automated manner? Then, um, so this is this is just to give you idea about what all customers are using Kubernetes and the jobs available and why you should be learning Kubernetes as well. So that is going to be first part. And the second part we're going to talk about is the Docker, which is containers and containers are runtime. Then we'll go into the second part, which is a Docker. And, and when I say Docker, I mean, I'm going to use that interchangeably with containers as well. What does container mean? So we'll look at the container component or Docker component and its architecture, what makes a Docker. And the common terminologies uh, that are being used, which is an image, container, Docker Hub, etc. We'll be talking about how this Docker container works. Briefly touch base with Docker installation. Um, again, we're going to go deeper later in subsequent videos uh, or subsequent uh, sessions on about these, but what to expect on how you sh or what you should be doing in terms of hands-on labs to understand this. We'll also briefly touch base with Docker container lifecycle on high level, and then we'll go deeper into, if you want to go deeper, to understand these very well. We'll understand the difference between Docker file and image and containers, how they run, and how images are interlinked with containers, what actually image means, what it contain, contains, etc. What are the different things that makes an image uh, on that as well. Also, what all hands-on lab that you need to perform in order to understand these concepts, which I'm going to talk about here. We'll also talk about container registry uh, and different type of registries that are available, which is Docker Hub. Uh, on AWS, you have AWS ECR, Elastic Container Registry. On Oracle, you have Oracle Container Registry, OCR. In Azure, you have Azure Container Registry, ACR, and Google Container Registry as well. Uh, then, what are the different 
op operations that you perform when you are pulling out or pushing um, the images uh, in order to run the containers as well and then hands-on lab for containers. How do you run the containers? And I'll give you, I'll tell you what, where you can get all these hands-on labs as well available on the portal for you. Then the two important things in containers, which could be, as I said, I'm using word interchangeably with Docker. So, <clears throat> so the networking um, and networking on, and there are th three different type of networking uh, that you will see, which is a bridge network, custom network and a Docker host network as well. Uh, then storage, how do you, you need a persistent data to stay with your application. So what are the different storage options available um, on, how do you share the data across different containers as well? And you want to retain and know that the data stays on containers even after the container is restarted as well. So how do you do that as well? Also the database, if you're coming from database background, you need uh, the um, to store the data in a relational format if you're doing or a different type of formats what are the database options and how do you create these database options will also be you will also get a guide towards end on postgres a sql but this is more on a in depth when we go in depth about this i'm going to keep it high level here as well then we'll look at what is docker compose this is very common questions you get in interviews or if you're learning or if you're talking you need to know about these differences as well what the docker containers or compose means and then that will complete our second part which is containers and then we'll move on to the container orchestration tool um, what are those options are within docker you have a docker swarm which we have already discussed and then how do you perform docker swarm again if you are a beginner i would suggest or if you are new i would first suggest you to focus on Kubernetes instead of Docker Swarm because um, Kubernetes is much more famous than compared to Docker Swarm now in the world which we are living right now. So that's when we will transition into the container orchestration tool that's Kubernetes. So we'll look at components, various components, master node and worker node, the different architecture within or components within the master node and worker node, what each of these means, what the role of each of these will go and understand. Again, I'm, I'm saying I'm going to keep it bird's eye view in that program. And then later on this, uh, this class, which I'm invite, which I'll be inviting you and how you can get hold of this class. I'll talk about that as well. Um, later, we are going to go deeper into these topics as well. Now, in Kubernetes, the first thing you do know, once you understand the concepts, you will be installing a three node Kubernetes cluster, how to do it on cloud with the AWS cloud or Azure cloud or Google or Oracle, any cloud of your choice, we'll talk about that as well. We'll also talk difference you should be knowing, which will be covering difference between virtual machine, containers and pods, what are the difference between those and what does pod look like? How do you create them as well? The life cycle of pod, where each of these component are architectural component that you say in Kubernetes, you'll be learning about that. Also, the deployment, what the deployment means, and how do you deploy an end-to-end -end stack, application stack, which consists of the databases, the application tier, the web tier, the load balancers, all those things uh, we'll be doing. Um, you'll be getting an opportunity to do the lab as well on this. We'll also talk about node affinity and entire affinity, which means on when application gets deployed, which we call application, package into a pod so in if you want to restrict and say this pod should always go in a particular machine or should never go into a machine uh, those will talk about ent affinity and ent entire affinity taint and tolerations which means even if you have said not to go in what conditions it can go we say how much toleration is available we'll talk about that as well now if you're running containers and in a pod pod runs multiple uh, pod can have multiple containers. So what are the, these multi-container patterns, which is sidecar, adapter, ambassador, we'll briefly touch base what the sidecar means as well. Then important topic about services, that's how you access an application. There are different types of services like cluster IP, load balancers, node port, and ingress that you should be knowing. What does ingress controller means? Uh, again, we'll point you on, or I'll give you a high level overview so that once you go deeper into the containers, your containers and Kubernetes class, you know and understand them well um, as well. Then like the way we did in containers, Kubernetes, you have something called as to store the data, there's something called as persistent volume or storage. So what is a persistent volume and how do you claim it? PVs and PVC we'll talk about. Also, if you're building a stateful application, which means uh, even after the restart of the, uh, the, uh, the uh, application or the machines 
or the containers, your data should stay. So how do you maintain that stateful applications? We'll be learning about that as well. Once you understand these basics, then you go for high availability and scalability. So high availability, active, active applications. How do you do the rolling update? If you need to modify or update your application, how do you do that without any downtime, which is a rolling update or changes or deployments as well? And of course, everything will be covered by doing a hands-on lab there and then. Then um, horizontal pod auto scaling. If the load on your application increases, how do you auto scale your applications automatically based on some conditions that you can set? What that horizontal pod auto scaling means as well. Once you're done, then we'll look at the task. So in order for you to do some activity, there are there are two options. One is job and cron jobs. So what are the difference between job and cron job? We'll be understanding which one you're going to pick on what scenario you'll be learning those as well. Then once we have done that, we'll move towards security. There are four different types of securities or four C's of security. We say the cloud, cluster, container, and code. What are these uh, means? Uh, scanning images, code from a developer's point of view, um, from an administrator or architect point of view, role-based access control are back in Kubernetes. We'll be learning that as well. Now, network policy, which dictates port to port communication by default, port to port is allowed. So how do you block that? or what does network policy means we'll talk about that now if you once you know these a more advanced thing is integrating that um, kubernetes cluster with um, something like azure active directory so that your users access roles can be linked with your azure groups or azure active directory roles and groups as well so we'll talk about that then namespace which is a logical partitioning of cluster kubernetes cluster and then dns which is services will be talking about that as well how what does namespace means this is something you need to know if you're a developer or an architect other thing you should know is about config map because application configuration you want to keep it outside your container so how do you do use that what is the config map states and then secrets which is nothing but your um, um, secrets which is the sensitive information like your passwords keys etc where do you store because again you don't want to keep them unencrypted so you put them into secret what that secret means we'll talk about that and then again as i said where to find these hands-on lab on the portal for you then if you're doing maintenance troubleshooting there is a concept of cordon and uh, drain uh, which means keeping a, a blocking so that no new request can go to a particular node um, how do you do what does mean that means and then health probe which is like readiness probe and uh, uh, second one is um, liveliness and readiness probe what the health probe means and then finally troubleshooting which has been taken from uh, some the sources which will talk about that as well how do you troubleshoot these clusters um, because that's important if you're maintaining the uh, maintaining the um, yeah uh, then backup and restore very very important especially if you're going for certification which i'll talk in a minute um, so backup and restore will be briefly touch base with docker and restore and then finally upgrading now this is something if you're looking at the portal this we keep constantly updating because the upgrades changes so hands-on lab on upgrade will keep changing as the things change uh, as the new version of kubernetes cluster comes so we'll install an older version and then upgrade on to this but that's more on a in-depth program which we're going to talk about after this basics as well upgrading um, also how do you set up a active active across the master node of course in the three node cluster you're doing for a worker node in master node how do you set up the active active across master node components as well and then elk stack which is elastic search log stash and kibana why uh, or what does mean um, why they are becoming or what you need to do and perform and how do you perform this ELK stack so that you can configure all the monitoring logging um, as well then this is more for an end-to-end -end cycle which is like when you're running containerized applications how do you develop distribute deploy and run these applications so we'll be briefly touch base so that you understand the whole picture as well and then once you have done the basic concepts of container and Kubernetes, then we are going to deploy end-to-end -end application uh, using in a CACD pipeline stack uh, so that you understand the full picture, how these are done in a real world as well. Um, so this is, again, as I said, I'm going to keep it high level bird's eye view because otherwise they'll be, um, it'll, it'll become easily become a couple of um, good uh, five, six days program. I'm going to keep it high level so that we can understand it in in probably you should be able to understand this in one or two hours that's the whole objective of um, 
as an architect, as an someone who then can go deeper into each of these topics. Then we'll also talk about the certification. I'll keep it high level, Kubernetes certifications, and how do you get hold of these sample exam questions or where to find these sample exam questions on the portal for you as well. Then some of the project which we you'll be seeing later once you've done that, uh, things like how to convert a monolithic to microservices. We are going to do it, this project on AWS Cloud, so you understand not only containers and Kubernetes, but then cloud as well. So what does this means and how we can get hold of or what we you can expect in this project. Again, I keep repeating, I'm going to keep it high level so that you know what you can expect. Then other thing which, once you have done the basic part, which is containers and Kubernetes, then you go for next part, which is becoming more common, Helm which is a package manager for Kubernetes applications, Prometheus, which is, um, and Grafana, which is log monitoring and analytics part. So what is Helm, what is Prometheus, what is Grafana, we'll talk about and how they tie to each other as well. Now, something new interesting coming on Kubernetes uh, version. Uh, I'm recording this in 2023, uh, mid or end towards last quarter of 2023. So what to expect in, hopefully by the time you're listening that, the Prometheus part should already be done in Kubernetes, uh, or we'll, we'll talk about that later. Once this is done, then we'll talk about containers and Kubernetes on AWS, uh, which is your uh, AWS, Azure, Google, and Oracle, what all things you should be learning on AWS. So this is similar to what you've done in uh, on-premise. Now we are going to do it on cloud, which is what you can expect. This is a separate thing uh, on deploying a EKS, Elastic Kubernetes cluster or services on AWS cloud, which is Kubernetes on AWS cloud. Uh, what all things you should be learning, things like terminologies, uh, what all different um, options, deployment options are available, what are the tools and services used on AWS cloud, which one to use in what scenario we'll be talking, understanding as well. So things like ECS, EKS, Fargate, and a lot of other things. Uh, the same architecture that you saw, but how it's being deployed on AWS cloud. What are the flow look like on AWS, the whole flow of deployment of Kubernetes cluster on AWS cloud as well. And these are around 12, 13 hands-on labs. Whatever you learned in standard uh, on-premise Kubernetes, then how you do same thing on a managed Kubernetes, which is uh, AWS. Um, so we'll talk about this whole end-to-end -end deployment we call unmanaged and managed Kubernetes, both of them as well. Once that's done, then you're also going to learn on Azure. Again, I'm I'll keep it high level in terms of uh, from Azure. So we'll have, I think, four sections now. Um, first is containers, Kubernetes. First is overview. Then we'll say the background and then containers and then Kubernetes. And then fourth is managed Kubernetes, which is on Azure. Same thing, but on Azure, uh, what all things, options you have for Azure Kubernetes services as well. And then Google, and then finally on Oracle. Um, so that will, once you understand, this is a three phase approach we take. Uh, which will give you so that you become an expert by learning and understanding containers, Kubernetes, manage Kubernetes on cloud, whole picture, so that you start preparing and write your CV and update your LinkedIn profile to, to say that and confidently say that you've done these things. We help, we'll give you an opportunity how, like, on how to prepare for these mock interviews, interviews so that you get a high paid job. And this is the whole mantra of this. So if you're interested, leave a comment. Um, so this is what you're going to uh, expect on this in this, uh, please. Um, yeah, so if you have any other question, uh, don't hesitate to ask. And just let me know in the comment section that you're interested so we can, we can invite you for this, or once this class becomes available, I'll let you know. And hopefully by the time you're watching this, um, that class should already be available. So leave a comment and say, I want to learn more or interested or something which I'll probably know that so my team can reach out or just type words, say, I want to know more or I think interested, interested to know more. Uh, and then we'll send you, so type word interested, uh, sorry, uh, so that we can tell you, uh, it will tell me that how many of you guys are interested uh, or to know and learn more about this uh, topic. Um, and, and hopefully next one or two days, you should have this class ready. Um, yeah, so with that, this is Atul from Team Ketun Academy. It's just gone a little bit deeper, uh, but I'll, I'll try to give a lot of value in this to understand containers, Kubernetes, and manage Kubernetes on cloud, uh, what all things you need to learn. With that, this is Atul from Team Ketun Academy. If you have any other question, leave a comment um, on for me, and I'll see you in this um, Bert's view of what you can expect in containers, Kubernetes, and managed Kubernetes. Take care and bye for now.